In this video, I want to go through a CFA level one exam style question on the topic of intangible assets. Under both IFRS and US GAAP, intangible assets are a tricky category uh, because the rules for uh, when you can include an intangible asset in your balance sheet are very specific and they have a completely different approach, those accounting rules with regard to assets generated internally within the company and those which have been purchased. So if this is something you want to get right in the exam, I suggest you keep watching and let's get solving. This is the question which I want us to have a go at. It's purely theoretical. Which of the following statements regarding internally generated intangible assets is most likely correct? So please note that we are specifically being asked for internally in-house within the company generated inter uh, intangibles. A. IFRS require that all costs incurred in the development phase of an internal project be capitalized as an intangible asset. Under US GAAP, software development costs are more likely to be capitalized if the project relates to software developed for sale rather than for internal use. And C. With the exception of software development costs, US GAAP require that research and development costs be as expensed as incurred. Okay, let's move this question aside for a moment and write down some general uh, rules. Irrespective of whether we're talking about US GAAP or IFRS, there is a generic concept that I want you to understand, and that is the fact, which I already mentioned, that we approach intangible assets differently depending on whether they have been internally generated. So this is going to be internally generated intangibles or intangibles which have been acquired. And when I say acquired, I don't necessarily mean that you separately need to acquire an intangible asset as a standalone item. Very often intangible assets are acquired and brought into, with, into the company as part of the acquisition of another business, which brings with it certain intangible assets of a marketing nature, such as a brand, a logo, uh, relationships with customers, etc., etc. Now, those which have been generated internally, that is developed internally within the company, the general rule from which there are exceptions is that we expense the costs associated with uh, developing those assets internally within the company, meaning we take those costs directly to P&L and therefore we don't create any asset on our balance sheet to show that this is a resource which will be bringing us future economic benefits. On the other hand, the general rule associated with acquired intangibles, but once again, let me point out that this is just a general rule, is that the costs associated with these are going to be capitalized. So expense costs, and in this case, capitalize the costs. And when we say capitalize the cost, we mean don't take them to P&L as a current expense. So don't do this, create an asset which corresponds in value to the costs which have been incurred. Obviously, an intangible asset. So that's the general rules. What about the exceptions? So let me write over here, but. And this is where we have to make this split into the world of IFRS and US GAAP. Under IFRS, we have some special rules for internally generated intangibles um, and the costs associated with this. So costs incurred, obviously internally, on research and development activity. And, and although in, um, you know, in normal speak, we treat research and development as pretty much one thing. We often say, you know, we often use the abbreviation R and D to denote research um, and development as if it was just one concept. <clears throat> Under IFRS or generally within accounting, research and development are not the same thing. Re the research phase of a project typically um, 
signals that we're uh, at the beginning, we're searching for some innovative solution. We're not very sure whether an outcome will be um, successfully found. So there's a lot of question marks within the research phase of a project and therefore not necessarily a very high probability that the, what we're spending money on will bring anything beneficial in the future. And because of that, any money spent on on so-called research under IFRS should be expensed, meaning taken to P&L as a current expense. On the other hand, under IFRS, the word development is reserved for a phase of a project or activities where you're not necessarily searching for something new, innovative, you're trying to apply the knowledge you gained during the research phase of a project or some other prior knowledge that you may already have had to develop a new product, you know, a new service, apply some new um, solution, but one which already we know works from our research activities. And because the probability of achieving success something realistically economically beneficial during the development phase is much higher than in the research phase. What happens is IFRS permits the capitalization of these costs and the creation of an asset whenever the company is incurring such development costs. So let me write and let me be very careful with the wording here. These costs or these expenses may be capitalized, meaning we create an asset out of them. So ideally cash flows out within our assets, but a non-current intangible asset appears and absorbs the cash which flows out. So this may be capitalized, but only if certain conditions are met. Now, generally speaking, you're not supposed to even know these conditions or you don't have to know them. There's quite a few of them under IFRS. But those are conditions which basically safeguard us from a situation where we create an asset, but we're not sure whether the benefits associated with that asset will flow into the company. So if you're in a development phase of a project, if you want to take the costs incurred and create an asset out of them, you have to convince yourself that the project will be completed, that the project will most likely bring future economic benefits, that you know how to use the results of that project, etc., etc. Uh, things or very common sense criteria which would be associated with the creation of any asset or keeping any asset in the balance sheet. You have to be pretty much sure that what you're keeping in the balance sheet as an asset will bring you economic benefits in the future, or at least the fact that this is probable. Now, under you, so this was IFRS. Let's have, a, let's have a look at the situation as it applies to uh, US GAAP over here. Under US GAAP, the rules are different again. research and development costs. So let me just write R&D. We know that's research and development generally are expensed. So we don't have this possibility to capitalize development costs if certain conditions are met. However, there is an exception to this, which you need to know, but it relates to something very specific, internally generated software and software only. Okay. Under IFRS, nobody says that these development costs must be software related. This could be, you know, a development within a manufacturing process or a development within a project within a pharmaceutical company to improve, um, I don't know, the efficiency, the uh, success ratio or the success rate of medicine that we're creating, etc., etc. Please note that a lot of the uh, costs incurred by pharmaceutical companies are related to research. For example, trying to find a solution for um, or, you know, something that will work when it comes to curing or preventing certain disease, diseases, which so far have um, not been uh, successfully treated, such as, I don't know, Alzheimer's disease, for example, that's still in the research phase. 
but a development project could be you know making a pill which is um, which which we know medically works but we want it to we want to make it work even better and that could be for example a development project where the chances of success are much higher than within a research project now under us gap we generally expense unless it's internally generated software and software only but here there's going to be and unfortunately you need to know this two rules which are different for software that is for sale and software which is for internal use within the company itself. So what are these rules? Very specific. If the software generated internally by the company is intended for sale, we expense the costs, meaning take them to P&L, until, well, until what? Until technological feasibility is established, is established. Until we know, from a technological perspective, we are able to bring this project home. And after that, once this has been established, after this, we capitalize the costs, i.e. turn them into an asset and don't take them to current income. Don't take them to current PL. What about if the project is um, done or uh, being done for internal use? Well, we also expense the costs. So we take them to PL initially, but until it is probable that the project will be completed and used as intended. Once this is established, we once again are able to capitalize any further costs. After this, we will capitalize the further costs, but only the costs which are incurred thereafter, not the ones which have already been expensed. We can't take them out of the uh, income statement and turn them into an asset. Now, your book makes an interesting, or your curriculum makes an interesting statement, which I've actually decided to explore as part of the question. So with this big portion of theory, let's have a look back at the question itself. Which of the following statements regarding inter internally generated inter intangible assets, sorry, is most likely correct? So we're only talking about these internally generated assets. We're not talking about acquired intangibles because the general here the rule would be that they would be turned into um it, it would be easy to turn the costs incurred to um, acquire an intangible asset such as a license such as a patent software etc which is acquired from externally into an asset which is sitting on our balance sheet what about the costs which we as a company incur internally to develop something like software or something else. IFRS require that all costs incurred in the development phase of an internal project be capitalized as an intangible asset. Okay, what IFRS says is that costs incurred internally on development may be capitalized, but only if certain conditions are met. So it's not by default that they are capitalized, there are further conditions which need to be met. And that actually means answer A is incorrect because it's not all costs incurred in the development phase that get uh, capitalized. There is further criteria which tests whether this can happen. Under US GAAP, software development costs, okay, we're over here, and we're talking about internally generated intangibles, so this is software which is done internally, are more likely to be capitalized if that project relates to software developed for sale rather than for internal use. Now, this is tricky, but your curriculum makes a very sort of plain, clear statement. It says... When you're creating software internally within the company, it's easier to demonstrate that a project 
will be completed, then it is to demonstrate technological feasibility. So what it's saying is, whether you agree with it or not, but this is easier to demonstrate than this. So let me write more difficult to demonstrate. So if it's easier to demonstrate that it's probable that a project will be completed than it is to establish technological feasibility, then under US GAAP, software development costs are more likely to be capitalized if the project relates to software developed for internal use, not for sale. That's more difficult to demonstrate according to your curriculum. So this answer is, uh, where are we over here? This answer is wrong because it's actually the other way around. What about answer C? With the exception of software development costs, US GAAP require that research and development costs be expensed as incurred. Well, I wrote this, R&D costs are generally expensed as incurred, meaning taken to P&L in the same period when they actually take place. That's what we mean by expensed as incurred. And yes, the only exception is internally generated software. So I guess this makes answer C the correct one. And because we were looking for the one which is most likely correct, yes, the answer to this question overall becomes answer C.